recorded and so I want to welcome everybody to the Thursday morning uh, House Appropriations Committee meeting. This morning we're going to start with um, uh, House Bill 611. We have um, a few members that are leaving to go to another Zoom meeting and so what I would like to do with 611 is to have um, uh, Jen from Legislative Council to walk through a proposed amendment um, from uh, a group that, that has been working on section five and six, the, the, the sections that, um, uh oh, did I lose, oh, there it is. I thought I was taken offline. Sections five and six that um, um, were the reason why the, the bill has come to house appropriations. So those of you who are leaving, we're going to discuss this amendment. If you have questions about the amendment, I would get in touch with Jen Carby or Teresa Wood. Um, or Diane has been following the amendment and will not take a vote on the amendment. Um, it would be, we have to figure out the procedure to see if we're going to take an official vote or if it's, um, or a vote depending on which, which path the amendment comes to the floor. Okay, so those of you, if you're all staying terrific, if some of you are bumping off, I will see you um, as soon as you're done with your meeting, if you're done before 1030 or we'll check back in at one o'clock. Is that good with all of you? Okay, welcome, Jen. Thank you for coming. And um, let's look through this language that has been worked on uh, that would um, replace section five and uh, perhaps redo section six. Great. Jennifer Carby, Legislative Council. So this amendment to H611 um, would actually delete sections four and five. Four was the definite, adding a statutory definition of home and community-based services um, that would go in the chapter where section five was going to add a new section. So we don't need sections four, section four, and we're deleting section five. And then this would amend section six, um, which had been the home and community-based service provider rate study report. This would add in an inflation factor component and some other language as well. So the first thing it does in this section is to add in that same definition of home and community-based services that had been going in section four and is used elsewhere in the bill um, so that everyone has a common understanding of what kinds of services and service providers they're supposed to be looking at in doing this report. So that's uh, subsection A. Subsection B has, uh, starts with the same language as in the uh, original bill, having the departments of DIVA and Dale conduct a rate study of the Medicaid reimbursement rates paid to providers of home and community-based services, their adequacy and the methodologies underlying the rates and the departments shall, and then I've added in a new first one that reflects, I think, some of the conversation in this committee. So the departments first determine Medicaid reimbursement rates for providers of home and community-based services that are sufficient to recruit and retain individual service providers while creating a fair and equitable balance between cost containment and high quality care. So this borrows some concepts from um, some of our, our workforce development language in the um, healthcare human services context. It borrows some language from the nursing home rate setting statute around finding that fair and equitable balance between cost containment and high quality care. So that's the first part that's of the study that's new. And then uh, we go into the rest from the bill as you'd seen it before. So establish a predictable schedule for Medicaid rates and rate updates, identify ways to align the reimbursement methodologies and rates for home and community-based service providers with those of other payers, limit the number of methodological exceptions and communicate the proposed changes to providers um, prior to implementing any proposed changes. Then we have a, this new subsection C that's in bold and highlight. And this directs Diva and Dale to develop criteria and a process for calculating an annual inflation factor for potential application to the Medicaid rates for providers of home and community-based services in future, future fiscal years. In developing the criteria and process, the department shall consider inflation factors applicable to payment rates for providers of home and community-based services in other agency of human services programs 
and may include elements of the inflation factors in, and this is the, the official name of the Agency of Human Services um, Nursing Home and Long-Term Care Facility Rate Setting Rule. Um, so it's in Agency of Human Services, Method Standards and Principles for Establishing Medicaid Payment Rates for Long-Term Care Facilities, and it has the citation. Then subsection D um, has the report coming in on April 15th. That was the extended date from um, the amendment that you'd looked at from the individual members of the Human Services Committee. It would be reported to the Human Services Committee and to this committee and to the Senate counterparts. Um, and that would be with the results of the rate study conducted pursuant to subsection B of this section and the criteria and process for calculating the inflation factor as set forth in subsection C of the section. And then finally, I made a change in the effective dates. Um, it was no longer necessary to spell everything out. If we could just scroll down to the next. There we go. Thank you. It was no longer necessary to refer to all the different sections because everything would take effect on passage except for um, the one piece in section one of the bill relating to the state plan on aging. We could take out all the rest. Thank you, Jen. Um, Teresa, could you scroll back up to the language, please? To and Could I just um, make a statement? So if anybody has anyone that wants to get in the meeting, I'm going to send the link because I think it's only, I think everybody should be allowed to come into the meeting. I'm going to send the link. They just need their name showing or I'm not letting them in. So I'm going to send this link out and you can share it with anybody that's asking. Okay. Okay, so we have Candace Elmquist in the waiting room. Do we, Teresa? I've just let her in and okay. I, sent, I sent her the link intentionally. So anybody, if you have any constituents asking, I'm going to send the link and you should share just that link with them and tell them they must have their name showing before I let them in. That means we have to be paying attention to our emails at the same time. <clears throat> I don't see anybody in mind. All of you may uh, want to look at this. Um, I, I just have a, did I lose my members that are going to the economic development group? Um, it, yes, uh, I know the two of them left. Okay, I, I just had a, question, but that's all right. Let's just go back to this. So, uh, Teresa, can you scroll um, down a little? I want to get to the thoughts about the inflator, please. And uh, the intention of oh, just, those. No, go up. Excuse me if they needed to. Bill in the background. Is everybody else? Uh, that was separate from Vita, or if they could run it through one of uh, their oh. others. We have something on in the background. We're hearing uh, the meeting. So, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, that's me. Sorry, I'll yourself. Can you mute yourself, Mary? There we go. Yeah. Oh, am I not muted with We're you? Muted. That's my problem. <laughs> Okay, let's go to okay. page two. Thanks, Mary. Am I in the right place? I don't know where uh, you're in. No, no, I want to uh, scroll. Um, I don't know what my up is, your down. So I want to go some more to the next page. Okay. Ah, right here. Stop. This okay. is what I'd like, please. Um, so for the committee, this is uh, where we were um, having the discussion this week and last week about the um, automatic inflator that uh, that would have gone, the intention of the committee, we were told, um, that the inflator would be set in place. It would be mandatory. So the language takes out the mandatory piece and puts in for potential application um, to be considered by future fiscal years. So it is, um, it's simply developing criteria, um, and developing a process for the calculation and um, and would be brought back to human services. Is appropriations on there? Yes, appropriations gets the report. Okay, and to appropriations. So are there questions on this part of it? This, this is the part I believe that 
that, that we've been zeroing in on. I can't see any numbers now for hands. I have two hands and I've got to find you. Um, I have Dave and we have action circles, Teresa. I can admit action circles. Fine. I didn't uh, have one. Dave, your hand is up and I'm looking yes. for two hands. Yep. Whenever you're ready, am I okay? I am ready. Um, uh, a question. It says uh, in letter C, hold on here, I want to help everybody. Okay, well, there's A, B, B1, B2, B3, 4, 5, and then we come up to C in bold letters on mine. Um, it, it alludes to uh, shall consider inflation factors applicable to payment rates for providers of home and community-based services in other AHS programs. Could you, could you tell me what you think, could someone tell me what their thinking is about that and what, would, what does that mean? Hello? Teresa or Jen, could? Jen, do you want me to take that or? Yes, please. Okay. Um, <laughs> So uh, in, in looking at this language, um, Representative Iacovoni, we, we did not want it to only refer to an institutional um, regulation. So the, the regulation at the bottom of that paragraph is referencing the nursing home regulations and how the inflation factor uh, is calculated there. Um, as, as the committee knows, there are other factors that are considered when services are being provided in the home and community that may differ from that being provided in an institutional setting, such as a, a facility-based setting like a nursing home. And um, so the other um, home and community-based services in the Agency of Human Services uh, recently um, the uh, Division of Rate Setting has been completing um, uh, rate determination calculations for um, developmental disability services in the mental health field, um, and they may have done others. Those are two that I'm aware of. Um, so we wanted, we wanted this process, since it is actually more similar to that than it is to the nursing homes, to make sure that it included elements of uh, both. If you, are you understanding it or did I make it too complicated? No, I, I have a follow-up. Um, I, I, th I think I understand. May, may I just, uh, when I read it, I said, oh, does that mean um, if other home-based programs, which is what it says, home, if other home and community-based services, such as children's integrated services, um, haven't received an increase in many years, does that mean these folks would have a hard time getting an increase. Um, same thing with uh, uh, foster care parents. You know, they, they sometimes get an increase. They often don't. They're providing home and community-based services. One could argue that, I guess. Uh, um, no, I think that's that not That's not your point, correct? Correct. No, the point is uh, probably the opposite of that. Um, so that's another, you gave uh, another fine example. Recently, rate setting has done a, uh, um, uh, a rate audit and, and methodology for children's integrated services. Um, that's an, another good example. So what we want them to do is to consider the elements of that rate setting process that they have done in previous work for other home and community-based services. It's, it's not delaying anybody else's increase because that, you know, that all comes before you folks. Um, it's just saying in developing the criteria and process, consider inflation, consider the elements that you have used in other home and community-based service rate setting procedures. Okay, so, so if they haven't given any increases, it doesn't mean they wouldn't necessarily give one here. It's just try to be consistent is what you're saying. That's correct. Uh, consistent in the methodology. In the methodology. they've actually gotten an increase. Okay, Th thank you. And um, I would just add that I think to the, it says consider inflation factors applicable to rates. To the extent there is not an inflation factor that's applicable to a rate, there's nothing to consider there. So it's not, it's not a useful part of the exercise. So I think in, in requiring them to affirmatively look at inflation factors that are applicable um, in developing the criteria and process, it, it 
I think sort of by definition excludes those that do not have an inflation factor. Th thank you. Um, may I, uh, Kitty, may I uh, continue with another yes. question? Please. Can I, can I yes. just interrupt for one second? Kitty, are, uh, you're not letting people in, are you? Only if it's people I recognize their name. Can you not, can you not do that? Can you let me do that? Because I, I don't, I'm watching people disappear off my screen before I have a chance to let them in. <laughs> okay, I will do that. Thank you. It's just so fun answering that doorbell, Teresa. I know, I know. It's interesting <laughs> to open it, but just let me do that. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, Dave, we'll go back to you, and then I have Peter and Diane. Yeah, thank you. Um, let's see. ABB1 says in determining Medicaid reimbursement rates for providers. Wait until we're all there, Dave. Uh, Teresa yep. is taking the screen, so B1. Okay, we're there. Yep. In determining rates for providers of services that are sufficient to recruit and retain individual service providers while creating a fair and equitable balance between cost containment and high quality care. Um, did your committee talk about, obviously it's very um, important to be able to uh, address recruitment and retention, but many people need training. The system needs quality assurance. Um, there's other needs of the system. There's supplies, et cetera. So if I'm a, um, let's just say a home health agency, um, I may have the money to hire you, but I may not have the funds to train you or to equip you, certainly in periods of today. Did your community, did, did your committee talk about, um, uh, when you think about reimbursement rates, you seem to be, not a criticism, and just trying to clarify, you seem to be focused almost exclusively on the employees. Did you talk about the other needs that are necessary to address quality? Um, so uh, first off, Representative Iacovone, our committee has not seen this language yet. We will be reviewing it at 1.30 this afternoon. Um, this is language that Jen put together after listening to the, the discussion in Appropriations Committee the other day about wanting to see some sort of uh, intent or purpose statement in, the, in this part of the bill. Um, so, uh, as she said, she pulled this language from bits and pieces of a couple of, of uh, other uh, areas of statute. Um, so, uh, I, I'm not wedded to this particular language, although I would point out to you that I believe that, uh, and we can reverse the, the order of the, um, uh, you know, of how this is written, but uh, the things like training and retention and supplies all of those things to me point to high quality care. And those are the last three words of this paragraph. Those are all involved in high quality care from my perspective. That's how I believe that those are included within the context of what you were asking. Uh, appreciate, appreciate that. And uh, Jen, Jen's done a great job based on uh, what she heard. The, the notion I want to leave with your committee, uh, Representative Wood, is whether um, the concept as is in nursing homes, should be applied to home and community-based services. And that concept is that providers are obligated to assist the people they serve to quote, attain and maintain, end quote, their highest level of functioning. That's a different standard than whether you can recruit people and retain them, though that is mightily important. I just, I just leave that thought with you. Uh, Madam Chair, I'm not trying to complicate this, but I'm just trying to um, make sure if we're gonna have objectives in here, they are the, uh, the right one. Uh, thank you. And uh, Representative Iacovone, um, if there is language that uh, you want to suggest um, that your committee consider this morning, um, that's, that's fine, as long as Jen has the opportunity to to change it between now and 1.30, which I'm not totally sure of her schedule. Yeah, well, I guess I would suggest to my our, our appropriations committee, I'm not trying to, um, I, I'm just trying to put the concept in play for the policy committee to consider. And whether you come back with it or not, is that your policy jurisdiction is, I don't think it's ours. Okay, thank you for your input. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Dave. Yep. Um, 
Peter, I think you had your hand, and then Mary. No, uh, yeah. Mary, it was Diane. So I am good. Thank you. Um, so I, I have a question regarding back in C, uh, back in C. So wherever that is, B, we need to we need to move down the uh, the document, please, Teresa. There we go. Thank you. So I want to, uh, the second line there, uh, develop criteria and a process for calculating an annual inflation factor for potential application. And there, that's the question that I have. Why, do, why are we using that instead of, and calculate uh, a, an annual rate increase? What's the difference, please? Are you looking to me? I, whomever can answer it. I don't okay. know if you, if you answer Teresa or, or Jen, Jen would answer I'm sorry. It. Peter, uh, I mean, uh, Jen or Teresa, who would ever have that, um, the choice of wording between rate increase and annual inflator? Um, I, to, to be honest, I don't, we didn't really consider that uh, other language that you just mentioned, um, Representative. I, uh, we talked about annual inflation factor and uh, annual because we were presuming that um, the, the rate study would determine a, uh, you know, what, what the rates should be, whether or not we were ever able to get there is a whole nother story, but what the rates should be. Um, and then we're looking at, uh, we thought that the, an annual increase should be based upon inflation once you've determined what the rates should be. Um, right, I would just... That. That was the thinking behind it. Yeah, I think I would I would just add that I think the um, an inflation factor creates a rate increase. I mean, that's sort of what, what it does. But uh, to me, the, the idea of inflation factor is something where you potentially have a methodology that gets um, applied. The expectation is that that would be applied on an annual basis rather than a periodic rate increase. OK, so I. I'm philosophically opposed to an annual inflation factor. Uh, it bypasses the appropriations process and thus abdicates the responsibilities and the authority of legislators to do their job. That's, that's plain and simple. That's the reasoning behind my questioning here. Uh, however, I will probably support this because it at least removes the, the concept of, in fact, we shall apply an annual inflation factor and replaces it with determine what it ought to be and, and put it in the process. My concern is that on down the road, uh, a future legislature might decide to, to bind themselves to an annual inflation factor for which I am philosophically opposed. And because of that, I'm gonna reserve the right as to how I'll vote on the bill when I get to the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Um, Diane and Marty and Dave. So. I don't know if it's important, but I just thought I would I would bring it bring up um, that in the definition, it was one of the things that I asked to not just delete for, but it was important, or I think it's still important and could change in time. But why you why you see at the end there um, the definition to include home health and hospice services, assistive community care services, and enhanced residential care services. Can you tell because, us where you are, Diane? In oh, the I'm sorry. At the very, uh, very, very beginning uh, of A. 1A. Yep. 1A. That, you see that last, last line that's highlighted in, in, in A. Uh, not section 1A. What's section? Uh, so it's I, just A. Yeah, she's got it right there. Okay. I'm pointing it. Okay, thank um, you. Go ahead, Diane. There, there, there will, there could be potentially and probably will be changes in what at the federal level in the waiver 1115 considers as um, in, in, uh, um, in their definition. And right now, enhanced residential care services, the ERCs, are included. And but the assistive community ser care services are not. That's the ACCS. But in it's beginning to look like it has a potential out of Washington that they're going to in the next waiver exclude the the uh, the ERCs from from that waiver. 
So we would want to make sure that when we were looking at this, that our definition includes not just the 1115 waiver, but these other entities as well. Does that make sense? That's why I wanted to make sure that that was in there. Right. These are spelled out in there. So the definition means long-term services and supports in the Choices for Care program and specifically includes home health and hospice, ACCS, and ERC. Right. Thank, Thank you, you, Diane, for that clarification. Um, I have Marty and then back to Dave. Yes, my concern is back on uh, section C again, where we determine the inflation factor. And it, it sets up a process for calculating an inflation factor that may be applied. And then it also reports the House Appropriations on what that process is. Mm -hmm. The way I read this, it does not app automatically trigger the application of the factor. And I'd like that clarification, but then it what would the trigger be? Uh, a budget request, uh, they come in and say, we would like to apply the inflation factor this year. And then that would be part of a budget request, or is there some other mechanism that that app inflation factor could be applied? So as written, the language is just part of a study and a report. Um, so there is nothing in here that actually applies the inflation factor. It was my understanding that the committee was interested in, in informational, uh, in, mm -hmm. in information on an inflation factor, but nothing that would actually trigger it. So it would require some sort of legislative action, whether that was in the form of an additional uh, appropriation amount or codifying language similar to what we'd seen in the earlier version of Section 5 that would create it still subject to annual appropriations. Um, it would take some other affirmative action of the legislature before an inflation factor would be applied or some, I suppose, some other um, way that the agency chose to use money that had been appropriated to it. Um, but this inflation factor would not, absent somebody doing something else, um, give anybody an actual inflated amount. It's so you think that would be something that the legislature would do as opposed to within the agency? Do you believe the agency could do it on its own? Um, I suppose it's possible the agency could do it within its available appropriations, but um, but that would, would potentially suggest they had um, think, yeah. more, more funds than they had obligated. Right. It would require, uh, oh, oops, sorry. Teresa? Um, it, the, the way this was written was to take into consideration the concerns that House Appropriations had earlier in the week so that there would not be any automatic inflationary uh, increase. It's, it's only for informational purposes um, to see what it would be if it, if it could be applied. Uh, for instance, uh, it, would be left, it would be left up to the appropriations process to determine whether or not something would be included or not. It would give the basis, however, for calculating what it should be as opposed to now, you know, we just sort of guess at it periodically. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Marty. I'm going to go to Mary and then back to Dave and Peter because um, I'm trying to get people who haven't weighed in yet. Mary? <clears throat> uh, thank you. So, as I understand it, what has been accomplished here is um, kind of a broader, more in-depth look at the criteria, um, a broader, more in-depth look at how we do rate setting. And that it is a report back to us on so that we have the information so the legislature has the information necessary to make appropriate decisions or to weigh everything as opposed to the original language which said figure out what a rate will be and apply it in 21. Um, so i think this nicely addresses this proposed amendment nicely addresses 
what some of our concerns were about being obligated to make a future appropriation without understanding everything that we needed to understand. Um, it makes sense to me to strike out the existing language, I think, in section five, um, allow the Human Services Committee to consider this amendment. Um, Dave asked some interesting questions about, you know, did it need to be expanded, but that's way beyond our jurisdiction. We strike the obligatory language in five. Human Services can drop this in as an amendment on the floor and and I think we've accomplished both of our goals of both committees. Does that make, am I, does that make sense, folks? Do you see where I'm going? Thank you, Mary. I, I think that's really the simplest approach, knowing that there may be, um, the Committee of Jurisdiction needs to look at this language and there may be additional asks. I think as far as our committee is concerned, that you know, we're looking at the inflator. If we remove section five, it removes the inflator from the language. And then we could um, take a straw vote once we have the, the, um, the, the finished amendment from the committee of jurisdiction, and then it can just get dropped in on the floor. I'm thinking also how it's less, the least amount of confusion on the floor because it's really different working with Zoom. And I think that that does it. Um, what do other members uh, think? But um, that's a process question. And Dave, you had your hand up, um, I'm sure, not on the process piece, but on another piece. Yes, I did. Um, and this is maybe for, for the Policy Committee of Jurisdiction and for Jen's uh, guidance. Um, to me, there is a distinction between a rate increase for providers and an inflation increase for employees. I don't think this language dictates what, uh, assuming the process is completed and they come back, whether it's next April or whatever, I don't think, and this is a question, the language is attempting to say, what should employees who work in these services get for an inflation increase for the next fiscal year? It may be. Um, if, if it is, I have concerns because as many of you know, if my employees are granted a two or three percent inflation increase, I have increased workers' comps related expenses whenever that happens. My share of uh, FICA and FUI state unemployment taxes and, and social security taxes, I go up. And if I don't have a rate increase to accommodate that for some providers, probably all, that can be very challenging. So I guess what I'm, I'm trying to uh, invoke here for one of us better word, um, is the notion that uh, whether the committee of jurisdiction was exclusively thinking about pay for employees, because it talks about retention, and I know it's not your language, it's a proposal for you, um, talks about employee retention and recruitment, um, and which made me think about this was focused on employee pay. And if it is, I just wanted you to be uh, aware of other associated costs for providers and the possible unanticipated consequences. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Uh, Teresa, I see your virtual hand. Yes. Uh, thank you, Representative Iacoboni. Um, it is not the intent to dictate um, salaries uh, for employees of home and community-based service providers. Um, this, uh, the, the language, um, says that an inflation factor for potential application to Medicaid rates. So it, it is still referencing back to the rates as, as you were um, commenting on. It's not, it's not intended at all to, be, to call out any specific component of the cost for providers. So um, it, it is not a uh, employee salary bill at all. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Teresa. Uh, so now I would like to go back to the process uh, with the committee. And uh, there was a proposal put on the table by Mary to, to strike the section that, has the, that refers to the inflator 
um, in the committee to take action on a bill. The, the amendment would go back to um, the Human Services Committee where it, it, may, um, uh, it may be voted on <clears throat> as is, or there may be some additional uh, changes to the amendment. And then that way, I, I see it as the cleanest path forward, and then our committee can take a, a straw vote on us on on the amendment when when we see it in its final form do any other committee members have any thoughts on that process and i, I would ask jen uh jen would you tell me if um if we would need to strike just five or should we strike five and six it appears just five in this version so so you i've actually in this one i've struck four and five and amended six and eight. No, I just meant as the bill is now, if our committee is right. considering striking the inflation, is it four and five that we would strike or just five? Yeah, uh, four and five is better. Four is the definition that goes with five. Okay, thank you. So thank it's you. not the end of the world if, you know, if four happened without, but. Um, okay, thank you. Um, I just wanted to say, I think the, the uh, process, the procedure as you and Mary outlined makes a, a, an awful lot of sense. It's clean, straightforward, and um, if this everyone's um, liking, it gets the job done. Thank you. I caught the end. You were, um, <clears throat> something funky was happening with your uh, connection. Uh, so, okay. I, 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 I support what you outlined and Mary outlined. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other hands? Teresa? Teresa Wood? No, nope, you, okay. Um, hi, Mary? I see well, hand. Yeah, thank you. Peter, you had expressed a concern about, about this as written in terms of obligating us and, to a rate increase well why I, I absolutely understand this does not obligate us my concern is that it starts us down a path towards it and there's no guarantee that that path will continue but there's no guarantee that it won't continue uh if we strike four and five as is being discussed right now i'm fine with that uh and then and then the uh, the uh, human services committee can work on a a an amendment to the bill that uh, reflects what they would then like to to do. Um, you know, I, yeah, we need to help folks that are in this situation. Absolutely concur. Uh, I just go back to my my concept. It's the responsibility of the legislators, the legislators, to to take in information, to ask questions, to understand what the problems are, and then to work to address those problems and not put it on some automatic pilot. That's that's my concern. I do understand this is not automatic pilot at this point in time. Okay. Thank you, Mary. I, did you have a follow-up, Mary, uh, Peter? Um, we only have two members that are not at the table, and so I think we can move forward. I think we have the information we need at hand. We don't need uh, to understand the final amendment because as soon as that comes in, we'll take our position on the straw vote. Um, if there's no other opposition or um, any additional information that is needed. Um, a proposal was put on the table by Mary and, um, uh, and Maida affirmed it. Peter, you just talked to it, that we would move forward with the bill by striking sections four and five. Is that, is the committee ready to uh, take a vote on that? And we'll leave the vote open until the other two members can join us. Okay, so if so, uh, Diane, um, would you like to entertain a motion? Uh, may I just clarify, Kitty? Yes, Dave. Are yes. you asking us to vote on the bill now? Yes. I'm asking us to vote on the bill striking section four, four and five, if that is what uh, the motion is. That's what the discussion would be. And then Thanks. we would take a straw vote on the amendment. To amendment the they're coming back. Yeah. Actually, we're voting on an amendment first, and then we would yes. vote on a bill. Um, well, we're voting. We're voting on the strike all. So we're we're voting on uh, six eleven as as how it arrived in our com committee sections four and five. May, may I just briefly then before? So we're voting. Yes. We're about to vote on whether to delete 
the original um, five and six, correct? No, four, four and five. five. I'm sorry, four and five. Yeah, if I can just um, quickly um, explain why I'll be voting the way I am. Um, as policy, as you know, legislators receive an automatic pay increase whenever the collective bargaining unit uh, gives state employees an increase. That to me is a modified automatic inflator. The, in the transportation bill, town highway funding has an automatic inflator. Nursing homes have an automatic rate increase. Yet on the community side of the ledger, we choose not to treat similarly employed people the same way. So for those reasons, I'll be voting no on uh, the, the formal deletion of four and five. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Um, Mary, no, your hand was up. Okay. Um, Diane, would you prefer the uh, the motion came from someone else, or are you, you? Well, let me just see if I've got this right, and maybe Jen or Teresa could. I'm uh, just queuing to Teresa, because um, all right. So it would be a motion, and I can do it, or somebody else can, to move favorably H six eleven an act relating to the Older Vermonters Act as amended by the Committee on Human Services and further amended by House Appropriations Committee. I don't and think our so. further amendment is the removal of section four. Oh, we're, that's not an amendment. We're just striking sections. But that's an amendment. That's an, that amendment. Is an amendment. That's an amendment. That's we an have amendment. to strike those sections first. I think okay. you're just, can I ask a question? Yes, Teresa, yes. Um, I understood um, what you were saying, Kitty, was that you were voting on H611 as it came to your committee. Yes, yes. Okay, so that's not the motion that Diane just made. So right. you have too many amendments in there because we're You not have too many amendments, yeah. Amendment. Di okay. Diane, forget, forget, so the, forget the strike all amendment that you got from us previously. You're just voting on the, the first bill that you received, H611. Okay. So yeah. I, I believe first we would have to vote on striking sections yes. first, and then we will yes. vote on um, right. the bill as presented right. and then yeah. further amended by House Appropriations. Right. So, so somebody right. needs to make a motion to strike sections four, four and five. And Madam Chair, so we moved. Motion to, okay. So moved. We have a motion on the floor to strike sections four and five in House Bill six eleven. Is there a second? I'll second. The second. Okay, is there any discussion? We're not voting on the bill at this time. At this time, we're voting to strike sections four and five in H611 in the entirety. If there's no further discussion or questions or comments, the clerk shall call the roll. All right, so this is a roll call um, to strike sections four and five out of H611. Representative Conquest. Representative Fagan. Yes. Representative Feltis. Oops. Yes. Yes. Representative Helm. Yes. Representative Hooper. Yes. Representative Jessup. Yes. Representative Lamper. Yes. Representative Myers. Representative Townsend. Yes. Representative Iacovoni. No. Representative Toll. Yes. All right. Leave it open or we want we're to going to leave that open for the other two members. And and next um, if the direction we'll take and, and I'd entertain a motion to um, to um, to vote favorably on H611 as amended by uh, the, uh, the uh, representative Wood at all, at all, and, and further <coughs> house appropriation. Because <laughs> it's not a committee bill, right, Teresa? Right. It's not, but you're not, you're not voting on that amendment. Not yet. No, not yet. We're vote, no, we're voting on the bill before us, which is from you. And uh, the bill uh, be amended by striking all. So we are voting on the bill. Yeah, Jen's got it. Oh, no, you don't. So you don't have that at the moment. 
you just voted to strike sections four and five. Now you need to vote on whether to support the bill or, or whether to, uh, as so amended, the bill should pass or whatever the motion is for that. That's the action that you have. Later, you may take a straw poll on whether you would support. Yeah. No. No. no I'm support. not talking. We about wait till this talking, afternoon. Wait, 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 wait. I'm not talking about the second bill. I am talking about six eleven. The one we have in our possession is an amended bill by uh, Representative Wood et al. It, it says. Um, move yes, but you don't. But that's not the bill that you have in your committee. That's you right. have H611 as passed by House Human Services in your committee. Right. Mm -hmm. So this copy that I have in front of me is an old copy? No, the copy that you have in front of you is what, uh, is what House Human Services that doesn't have possession of the bill would like to do. Right. But, but we're going to redo that this afternoon. They're going to so redo it, right. It's not. So should we, should right. we wait to vote on that this afternoon? That our full... Yeah, I need to get clarification. You probably, you probably do want to wait to see right. if House Human Services actually supports the language, right. the revised language that you all looked at this morning. They haven't seen it yet. Well, it, 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 it doesn't, uh, whatever that revised language is, will be an up or down straw vote by our committee. Our committee's right. on four right. and five at this time. Right. But I think all you have done so far is strike out sections four and five. You haven't actually done a vote on whether to send the bill to the floor. Without right, sections and, that's what, and that's what I want to do now. Right. Okay. And I'm not talking about the amendment that they're going to be taking up this afternoon. Right. Okay. I'm talking about the bill that was sent to us, which amends H611. The bill. The human. The human services amendment to the introduced bill, not the Wood amendment. The, they, the human services. I, I don't. The one before me that is dated May twentieth. No, that's the wrong one. Right. right. That's my problem. Okay, I'm working off a May 20th bill. Okay, okay. so. Okay. You need an older one. You need a March 13th bill. Is that what it is? Okay. And that is a human services bill. Yes. Yes. Okay, that's, that's my issue. Okay, so let me put this one aside. Uh, this, and so the one that was, I, oh wait, I'm confused. The one that was sent out to us on March 13 is a human services bill and not this. Okay, got it. So I would support, um, um, I would ask for a motion to pass, um, to vote favorably for H611 as passed uh, by human services and further amended by House Appropriations. So moved. Is there a second? Thank you, Mayor. Oh. So the motion has been made by Representative Fagan and seconded by Representative Townsend. Are there any further comments or questions? If so not, let me just. Okay, go ahead, Diane. I was just going to. Uh, uh, Representative Fagan, seconded by Representative Townsend, move favorably H11, an act relating to an older Vermonters Act as passed by the Committee on Human Services, not amended, correct, Jen? Right, just passed, yeah. Yeah. And further amended by House Appropriations. Right, and further amended by, yeah. And then I put parentheses, section four and five removed. Can I? Right, so Human yeah. Services did amend the bill as it was, oh, as it was introduced. So it's not the say didn't pass okay. out of Human Services as introduced. They amended so it. This So amended. the further amendment from this committee language is right, but it was amended by Okay. Human Services as a committee. I just want to get the word uh, right. Teresa that it's so, so I've got to jump in here and um, I just, <laughs> so online, House Human Services committed the bill to House Appropriations. So right. there was no amendment from them is the way it's written online. Okay. And if that is incorrect, then they need to fix that. So it's, it's just H611, no human services, um, Okay. That's okay. it. So. Okay. okay. So move favorably H611, an act relating to the older Vermonters Act as amended by House Appropriations. No. No. House Appropriations. Yes. yes. But amend, right. No further. Okay. Thank you. No further. So it's just an act. I just want to make sure I get this right. 
All right, move favorably H611, an act relating to the Older Vermonters Act as amended by House Appropriations Committee. And I do have a question before I vote on this. I am looking I'm at, an, right and I've been working off a May 20th draft. What is, what differences would I see on this May 20th than I would have seen on the bill that passed out of Human Services? I'm voting on a bill that's not before me. Dan, you want me to do that or you want to do that? Um, it, why don't you go for it? I'll pull up the, I think I even have a markup document. There's not much. Um, it's it's um, because of COVID, we, we had um, more aggressive due dates for some of the reports and some of the actions in there. And so we moved those out further. So we changed dates, um, due dates like for the, uh, the age well plan is now a year further out. Um, and uh, the rate setting uh, was January 15th. We moved that to April 15th. Uh, for them to submit a report back to the legislature. Um, and then um, I don't have it right in front of me. Jen, oh, may, wait, maybe they do. And Too then we right. added, then we added um, language that says, um, the system should be designed to address the needs and concerns of older Vermonters and their families during normal times and in the event of a public health crisis, natural disaster, or other widespread emergency situation in this state. So oddly enough, our original bill didn't have any language about emergencies in it. So that, that those were the only changes. Those will all be in your amendment then? They will all be in the amendment that you take a straw vote on later today. Right. Because they're yes, no sir. longer reflected if they're in the one in front of us. The date changes, the April 15 date, all of that will be in your amendment now. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That clarifies that. Thank I you. do have a markup version or a pretty close to um, complete markup version if that would be helpful for you to see the differences. Otherwise, um, committee, I, I followed it with Teresa. Do any committee members want to see if you've been working off the the uh, the the May twentieth, which is not what we're voting on? It's the date changes that Teresa went over, moving to the April date, and the COVID related um, information will be added in their amendment. We're going back to the original. Titles. Are we set to vote on this. Um, I, it, does any, if you have any confusion, put up a blue hand and let's um, um, solve any confusion. I'm seeing no blue hand, so the clerk shall call the roll. Thank you, Madam Chair. Representative Conquest. Representative Fagan. Yes. Representative Feltis. No. Representative Helm. Bob, you are muted. And oh, no. Representative Hooper. Yes. Representative Jessup. Yes. Representative Lanfer. Yes. Representative Myers. Representative Townsend. Yes. Representative Iacovoni. Yes. Representative Toll. Yes. Seven to two, and we leave it. We're open. going to leave it open, please, for this afternoon. Thank okay. you, thank you, thank you, Jen, uh, Teresa. Thank you for coming in. Nolan, you're behind there somewhere. Thank you. Can I ask a, a detail question that, at the risk of confusing you, but um, in the amendment striking sections four and five, do you want me to also make the conforming sections to the effective dates, or just leave it as four and five, knowing it's a little bit messy, Inflip. but expecting. <laughs> the human services amendment or the wood amendment i, I think that we should uh, uh, absolutely make the effective dates um reflect our our um our decision okay so so yeah. make it work even though it's only going to last for potentially okay. only last for a few minutes yeah that's that's my preference but okay great yes I will do please that. please do that thank you jen thank you jen okay. Get over so to we're, we're going to yeah. move um Teresa, did you have something we're going, it's 10 o'clock, we have about a half an hour. I'd like to move to a letter that we...